A few months ago, I reviewed Asteroid City, after only having seen it once at the time. It made a fairly good impression on me by that point, but I hadn't completely pieced the film together quite yet, so I knew that it required another viewing. After now having watched it two more times since then, three times in total, I can confirm without a shadow of a doubt that this is easily Wes Anderson's best film to date. So far, the film's reception has been relatively mixed, with some people giving it high praise and others trashing it. I understand if it's not your cup of tea, but I do think people have been way too quick to dismiss Asteroid City as being empty and substanceless, when it's actually quite the opposite. The film is about many things. I would describe this script as being quite scatterbrained but in a good way. It works in a way that services the themes of the film. This is Wes Anderson at his most vulnerable and at his most introspective. We live in quite a tumultuous time, don't we? But haven't we always? I mean, as humans, have we not always dealt with some level of adversity? Yeah, but consider everything that's happened over the past decade. Or more narrowly, the past four years. During this time, in the wake of a global pandemic and civil unrest, spawned a cosmically terrifying film, deceivingly hidden within a seemingly innocuous, quirky comedy. At its core, Asteroid City is a mosaic of existential uncertainty, and a probe of the radically shifting time period in which we currently exist. To uncover the film's meaning, we first have to make sense of its general structure. Asteroid City is the name of a play that exists within a movie. The people in the play are stage actors, playing characters. The play is written by Edward Norton's character, Conrad Earp, and directed by Adrian Brody's character, Schubert Green. Brian Cranston is the host of a program that documents the production of the play. This is all very deliberate. It is important to keep in mind that the play is an allegory for art and the medium of film. Yes, it's all very meta, and there will be more on that later, so stick around. The film isn't exactly trying to be sensible in its continuity, so if you were expecting a straightforward narrative, then sorry to disappoint. In fact, on that note, continuity is often intentionally disrupted. The film is riddled with errors. This awkward cut when Woodrow stands up, Midge having improper arm placement between coverage, one take of Maya Hawk bleeding into the other. Just to keep orderliness under the circumstances, I expect that some some of our information about outer space may no longer be completely accurate. And this inconsistent framing of the three girls. These are just the ones that I picked up on. I implore you to mention any more in the comments if you caught some. But why does he do it? Wes Anderson, the guy who is known for being so meticulous with his visual style. What did I say? Everything has to be symmetrical. If it's not gonna be symmetrical, it's not going in the movie! I'm what Anderson! This brings me to the first point, chaos and the facade of order. As humans, we want control. It gives us peace of mind when we have agency over the outcome of our lives. But in a world of endless confounding variables and uncertainty, there never really is true order. Chaos is not random or absent of reason, but it is unpredictability. Even in Wes Anderson's calculated fictional world, things go awry. There are still blemishes in a perfectly symmetrical and thoughtfully composed reality. Everything's connected, but nothing's working. Let's carry on with the lesson plan then. We're all bought into a social contract, and we have methods of maintaining order, but none of this is ever guaranteed. It is our fascinating ability to congregate, but our guaranteed inability to know when the unexpected will occur and disrupt order. Anderson fittingly chooses the mid-50s backdrop as the setting for his narrative. Consider the time. 
A decade after World War II, there is economic prosperity, the nuclear family is the model household, and scientific innovation is exponential. Everything is great. Or so it seems. The threat of nuclear war sort of delegitimizes any true optimism. The difference between now and then is that now, we are much more content. We've become desensitized. Everything is all too accessible now. This is portrayed using the periodic interjections of bomb tests and police car chases that are just casually shrugged off by the characters. The film is calling our attention to this absurdity. Of course, we live in a very different time. But the laws of nature are unchanged. Anything can happen at any moment. Asteroid City alludes to the two-year-long quarantine that brought the world to a screeching halt. An alien appears with no warning and no clear indication as to what its intentions are. Some interpret this as death, I think it's COVID, but both can be true. And it can be applicable to any world-shifting event. The point will still stand. That point being that we are constantly blindsided. And as quick as something comes, just as quickly it seems to go. Where'd they go? Everybody. Of course, I understand. The president lifted the quarantine after all, at midnight. He sent the whole gang home, the troops, the cowboys, the junior stargazers, and space cadets. You are free to return back to wherever you came from. We had 11 checkouts this morning. I guess you overslept. The world came crashing down, and all of a sudden, we're right back to living life. So it goes. The world is moving faster than ever before. What, what's that? I don't know. I think you've got a third problem we've never seen before. Many have pointed out the subtextual commentary on AI within Asteroid City. And yeah, it's definitely a genuine concern of Anderson's. This is unprecedented. Artificial intelligence is uncharted territory. And that is frightening. I think the specific question being posed here is, what implications does this have for the future of film as an art form? Remember when I said the play is an allegory for film? Think of theater. The stage play has gradually become obsolete over the past 100 years, at least in its influence on pop culture and general consumers. Of course, it still exists, but in a far more niche market. This doesn't delegitimize the art form, but it certainly diminishes its ability to flourish or progress. It is a deliberate choice to have the play represent Anderson's concern for the future of film. Will it meet the same fate that the theater did? I don't know, and neither does he, but as the years pass, it seems more plausible. With franchise IPs taking up all the space at the box office, and smaller budget films making their way straight to VOD and streaming, it certainly seems like that cinema Scorsese was talking about is being left to the wayside. And with the advent of short form content and the emergence of the internet, there may be a whole new medium to eclipse film as in the very platform I'm using to communicate to you right now. In Asteroid City, Anderson poignantly asserts that film and art is something that has existed as a means to express the human condition. So is, uh, is, is she a ghost? That's not clear. What's the cause? What's the meaning? Why does Augie burn his hand on the quickie griddle? Why does Augie burn his hand on the quickie griddle? We don't always have to know the answer. In my video about Tarkovsky's mirror, I cover this idea, and I think it is effectively reiterated in Asteroid City. Art doesn't have to provide an answer. Sometimes it's meant to pose the questions. Well, I don't even know myself, to tell you the truth. I hadn't planned it that way. He just sort of did it while I was typing. Anderson is trying to make sense of the chaos and convey the unrelenting anxiety of uncertainty. He uses actors as a conduit for this message. The actor is as much a storyteller as the director. He is your grief. 
Enveloped in a relatively pessimistic film is a great showing of appreciation for the process, and a love letter to the people who have a hand in creating this art. He says, In real life, I feel like the actor often puts much of himself or herself into the role. What I intended is that people telling the story are part of the story, and they are taking everything from their lives that they do and don't understand and trying to make something out of it and find answers, or at least explore the right questions. Art is the expression of the illogical, and an algorithm is the antithesis of that. Until AI is as sentient as we are, there won't be any merit to what it creates, at least in my opinion. The reason Asteroid City works is because it's not trying to be sensible in its depiction of this scatterbrained existentialism. That is the point. The bouncing from one topic to the next seems messy at first glance, but this is done to encapsulate that very feeling. The feeling of the world crashing down and then having to pretend like everything is fine. Anderson is exposing the front that we put up, pretending that we have control, but really, we don't know what's gonna happen tomorrow. And that's kinda terrifying. So with that being said, you made it to the end of the video. You might as well leave a like, and you might as well subscribe. Feel free to give your own interpretation in the comments and be sure to follow me on other platforms linked in the description. But yeah, thanks for watching.